After a summer where everything felt possible again, being back in the studio has come with its challenges. These past two months, I reconnected with myself, but felt however so disconnected with my art practice. I just took a conversation this morning with my husband to realize that I've been hiding all my recent paintings because they're not matching my expectations. But mostly, because they don't seem to make sense as I'm building a portfolio and I'm having a hard time admitting this to myself. But then he mentioned something which brought tears to my eyes. He said, I don't think this is about your portfolio right now. I just can see that you're painting things that have been on your mind lately and, and they just need to come out. For the longest time, I struggled to find a connection between all my paintings. And now looking at them, I realized that self-healing might be my connection. I realize that I paint what I'm longing for or what I find sometimes hard to express. This shame of not being enough has been overpowering my ability to share and I'm now of the opinion that it's not fair. It's not fair for these paintings to never be witnessed as they are part of my journey. They're showing me ways I can improve the ideas that may be worth something. Thanks to these smaller works, I'm finally seeing a pattern in my work. The themes and colors are coming up for me. I now see something that has been connecting all my paintings so far that I couldn't see before, and it has brought me so much comfort lately. So I met Amy McNee yesterday and it's still very hard for me to believe that this meeting truly happened. Um, I, this morning I've been a bit reflecting on the little love letter that she wrote to me. I think something that I'm really taking from this meeting is that Amy really confirmed that my story and my creative journey are worth being shared and I wish to share my struggles sometimes because being a creative is not easy and I don't mean to sound like I'm not grateful for the life I have because I am. I feel lucky to even be able to pursue a dream I never thought possible. But I think it's important to show you that everything you see online when it comes to artists is not that simple. A lot of inner work is happening behind the scenes. Our life is not that simple. But still, I wouldn't trade this path for the world. In August, I fell in love with a book called All My Mothers, where the main character starts a quest book to gather what she finds relevant to help her find out who she is. I truly fell in love with that idea, so I bought myself a notebook and started to gather my own clues. Coming across this book was just another proof that things don't happen for no reason. The topic of motherhood has been deeply present in my thoughts lately. So much that I probably already have 15 pages in my book dedicated to it. And here is a little snippet. The bleeding is a bit of a pain, but the best thing about it is that it gives you the chance to be a mother. Being a mother to all of you was by far the best thing I ever did in the whole of my life. Much better than being an artist. Although perhaps mothers are artists. 
You're far more beautiful than any painting I ever painted. Mother is an artist. It's usually on Mondays that I find myself whispering. Time to tend to my inner garden. I pick up my notebook and I start writing down what I've been gathering during the past week. Besides motherhood, it looks like I'm dedicating this quest book to two other topics, which are community and art, how to cultivate a joyful process and practice my artistic confidence. Sometimes big shifts are so subtle that they can be missed. And I'm now choosing to notice them and honor them. Sometimes making bad or imperfect art seems that nothing is happening, nothing is evolving. Sometimes nothing is everything. <laughs> 